All right, here we go, guys. We are on quiz one review for unit 11. I'm gonna do one type of problem of each solid. And remember, you have a note card that has it very clearly labeled with all the formulas on them. And if you don't have one, you should probably make one. Here are the formulas that we're using um, for the surface area, okay? So I'm gonna start with number one. And we did a bunch of these in class um, yesterday also, just to um, make sure that we knew how to do one of every single type of problem. But what we did for the Kleenex boxes, which is what this shape looks like, this is a prism. So find on your note card where it says prism. And the first thing we did is we colored the base of the rectangular prism. This is the bottom of the Kleenex box that is touching the um, floor or the table or whatever it is. And underneath that, I found the perimeter of the floor, that pink shaded rectangle, and I also found the area of that pink shaded rectangle, which I call the base. And another thing to remember is that opposite sides in a rectangle are equal, so therefore if this is eight, I am also gonna put an eight black here. And then same thing for this side, which is only two centimeters, that is the same as this over here, so I'm gonna put a two right there. And so the perimeter, what we're doing is it's just the outside of that rectangle that I highlighted. I'm going to do 8 plus 2 plus 8 plus 2. That's how I'm finding the perimeter. And again, I'm only looking at the um, pink shaded area. I'm focusing on the base first before I look at any other part of the Kleenex box. And then um, the area of the base. So this is just a rectangle down here. The way to find the area of a rectangle, if you remember from earlier chapters, is 8 times 2. So I'm going to do 8 times 2, which is 16. Okay, now that I have my perimeter, which is 20, and I have my base, which is 16, now I should be able to do the formula for surface area. It's 2B plus pH. Double check that that is exactly what you have on your note card. Um, and so what I'm going to put the two and then for B, the B I already calculated here, it is 16. So I'm going to put 16 in and, um, the P I also already found that it was 20 and the height. Here's where we have to look at the rest of the Kleenex box. We have to think in 3d. The only number that I have not used yet, the only label that I have ignored so far, the height of that Kleenex box, how tall does it stand on the table, is five. And I am gonna put a five in for the height. Make a note to yourself on your note card if you need to about how to find the height. The height is the actual height of the entire 3D object, which in this case is a rectangular prism. So I'm gonna do two times 16, which is 32. And I'm going to do 20 times 5, which is 100. And that total area gives me 132. Next is a cylinder. Double check on your note card that you have the formula for a cylinder. Okay, the formula of the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And you just need to plug in all the numbers, right? Okay, so the radius right here is four. That goes right here and right here. And the only other thing that we need is the height of the cylinder. You can think of this as like a soda can or a soup can. The height of that thing is seven. So that's gonna go in there. And I'm gonna plug in my numbers, two pi. Don't forget the pi, that's an important part of the formula. The radius was four squared plus two pi. The radius is still four and the height here is seven. So now we just have to be careful typing this into the calculator. Remember, order of operations goes first. You start with the exponent. So four squared is not eight, be careful. Four times four is 16, and then don't forget that two that you have to multiply by, which gives me 32, and don't forget the pi. Again, just to recap how to do that, four squared is 16, multiply by two, which gives you 32. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take all these whole numbers, 2 times 4 times 7, which is going to give me 56. And again, don't forget the pi. Okay. And when I add those together, I have 32 pies, and I'm adding 56 more pies. I believe that gives me 88 pi. There's our final answer for that one. Number three, this one is a pyramid. Okay, so double check your note card and make sure that you have a formula written next to pyramid. How do I know it's a pyramid? Because it has a square base and all the sides come to a point, okay? Which is different from the Kleenex box that we did earlier, okay? 
Um, so what we're going to do for the pyramid is we are going to look at the base of the pyramid, the part that's touching the table or the ground or the floor or whatever you want to visualize. But once again, I'm going to do perimeter and I'm going to do base. And that is just having to do with the square right here. So how do I do the perimeter? Well, this is a six, this is a six, this back here is a six, and this on this side is also a six. So I'm doing six plus all the way around for all four sides, which is not 36, 24, sorry. And now I'm gonna do area of the base. The area of the base is this pink shaded area here, and for a square, you do six times six to find the area of the base. So six times six is 36. And yes, those two numbers are gonna use, be used in the formula. Surface area equals B plus PL divided by two. Double check your note card and make sure that you have that on your note card next to pyramid. We have done a different formula for all three of these problems so far because they've all been different shapes, right? Okay, so the B, um, let's see, I feel like I already did that. Here it is, it's 36. I'm plugging in 36 for the B. Now let's talk about P. I already did that also, it was 24. So I'm gonna plug in 24. Um, the L, and then don't forget divide by two. Let's think about this L for a second. Um, the L is the slant height. See how it's the height of the triangle, but it is slanted? That is the exact number that we need to plug in for the L, which goes right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put the eight there. It is the slant. If you wanna highlight it on your picture in a different color, you can, but that slanted height that's why we use a cursive L. I think it's an L because there's an L in the word slant. That's the slant height, okay? And then why do I have this two here? It's because it's in the formula. So don't forget the divide by two that is in the formula, okay? So how are we going to uh, type this thing into the calculator? Well, I'm gonna keep my 36. And in order to do this part, 24 times eight divided by two, let me pull over my calculator. 24 times 8 divided by 2 is 96. And then I have to add that to 36. And I get 132. Okay, that's how to do a pyramid, friends and family. Now I have a cone. Check your formula sheet. Do you have, or your note card, do you have um, a cone? This looks like an ice cream cone, right? It's got a circle, it comes to a point. Um, and so the surface area for the cone is pi r squared plus pi r l. And so what are we doing for the r again? We're just looking at the five, it's the radius of the circle, and the l is the um, slant on the cone here, which is 13, so I'm plugging in those numbers. The radius was five, and it's squared, and the radius is still five, and the l is 13. Careful about that. Five times five is not 10, be careful, it's 25. And when I take five times 13, I get 65. And when I add those together, 25 pies plus 65 more pies makes 90 pi. Beautiful, there's another rectangular prism. Look at number one to help you. Here's another cone, look at the one we just did to help you. Here's a cylinder, look at number two to help you. There's something funny about this one that I wanted to point out. Remember that the diameter is 10. That goes from here to here. And I do not have a D for diameter in my formula for a cylinder. Remember the surface area of the cylinder is two pi r squared plus two pi r h. And this r stands for radius, not diameter, okay? So when you're given the diameter, you need to divide the diameter in half and put five and five. The five is the number that we are plugging in for the radius here and for the radius here. The 12 is the height. Okay, so just be careful about that. When you're given the diameter, you need to cut it in half to be able to figure out what the radius is because it's the radius that goes in the formula. So you could do number eight now, just wanted to point that out. Number nine, it seems like we struggle with the um, triangle ones a lot. This is a triangular prism. If you wanna put the entire um, problem for this triangle on your note card, if you have room, go for it. But I'm coloring the triangle, and for the triangle, I'm going to do perimeter, and I'm going to do base, just like we did for all of the Kleenex boxes, okay? 
but notice that I am focusing on the triangle first, and that is how I'm gonna do perimeter and base because this is a triangular prism. It looks kind of like a piece of cheese that's sitting on its side. Okay, so perimeter, um, that means the perimeter of the triangle. There's a nine here, there's a 12 here, and these are 3D spatial knowledge to see that this side right here is 15, which is the same as that, okay? So I'm gonna add up those three sides. One of the sides was nine, one of the sides was 12, and the last side was 15. And what does that give me? Uh, 21 and 15 is 36, I think. That's 27 and, yeah, 36. Okay, why are there only three sides here? Because the Kleenex box, we added up four numbers, right? That's because, my friends, this is a triangle and that only has three sides. So that's why I'm adding nine and 12 and 15, okay. And for the area of the base, Remember that for a base, for a triangle, we have to do the two sides that make the right angle. So see the right angle right there? We have to take the nine and the 12 and we multiply them together and we divide by two. Why do we divide by two? It's because it's a triangle. Remember for the Kleenex box, we just did the base times the height um, and we did not divide by two. Well, for a triangle, the formula for the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So that's why there's a two there, okay? Um, anyway, so I'm going to take 9 times 12 divided by 2, which gives me 54, okay? And now for the um, surface area of the triangular prism, I'm going to do 2B plus PH, 2 times, I feel like we already did the B, it's 54, that goes here. Perimeter is 36. The height is the only number that we haven't used yet, so think about this. Here's the three. That is the only number that we have not used or thought about. It's the thickness of the cheese. The three goes right there. And so I'm gonna do two times 54, which is 108. And I'm gonna do 36 times three, which is also 108. That's kind of weird. And when I add those together, I get 216. Okay, so I think there is one more that I wanted to do. So we've got a cone here. Um, and notice how it says that we are missing the slant height. This part is not labeled. We need that L, okay? But we are given the radius of six, that's good. And we are given the total surface area. Okay, so how are we gonna figure this out? Um, I know that I can look at my note card and I can find the formula for a cone. So I'm gonna write that down. It is pi r squared plus pi r l. And remember, we don't know the l. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the l in the formula, but I think I do know the r. The r is six, so I can plug that in. And don't I also know the surface area? So I think I can put the 90 pi right there. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna look like. I have 90 pi. And pi, I remember what the radius was, it was six. See it right here, radius, six. And then, I don't know what the L is, so I'm just gonna leave L, that's kinda weird. Okay, what do I do next? I know six squared is 36. And I know this is 90 pi, okay. Um, maybe I can just use some algebra to solve. Right, like this is positive 36 pi, so maybe I can subtract 36 pi from both sides to cancel it. I feel like that might work. When I subtract 36 pi, I get 54 pi equals, and over here I still have pi times 6L. Oops. Okay. And remember from um, solving stuff like this earlier, pi's cancel, so that's good. So I have 54 equals 6L. I think if I just divide both sides by six, I can get nine equals L. Nailed it. Okay, so number 10 is the exact same, except it's not a cone. It is a cylinder, but you can solve exactly the way you did this one. Okay, thanks for watching. Let's crush this quiz.